Welcome to our new reference window feature. I'm excited to show you around this one and invite you to join me in doing a study of the sample image a little later. This feature will let you bring in images that you're using to study or to build up your next artwork. Right now you can only import a single image, but if you need an assortment of images to look at easily, we'll show you a way to set that up. For instructors, you'll now also be able to easily pass reference to your team of students without needing to paste the image onto their canvas and compromise the available space. So let's get into it. First, let me briefly take you through importing reference and using the various controls. To open the reference feature, go to your view menu at the top of your canvas, reference image, and then show reference window. Our Spark or free users will have a default image loaded and can test out the controls. Our Blaze subscribers, on the other hand, will have full access to the feature and can upload a new image either by using this replace button or use the import new image option through the view menu. You can even use another canvas that you have access to by going to replace and adding an existing image. You will need the canvas link for this. To get multiple references loaded into the window, you can first set up a canvas with an arrangement of images, copy the canvas link and then add that existing image. This way, art directors, for example, can easily share a mood board with their team in an art space, or instructors can give students a set of images to study in a classroom session. When you import a new image from your device to your reference window, it will be added as a new canvas to a My References folder in your art desk or art space. Keep in mind that these reference images do count towards your account storage. You can view previous images through the recent list over here. Now, these buttons obviously control the zoom of your image. You can use the slider or the zoom in and out buttons. If you're on a mobile device, you can use your fingers to pinch and zoom and drag your image around. This button will fit your image back to the size of the window, and these will let you activate either grayscale view or flip your image horizontally. To resize the window, you can click and drag from the bottom right corner, and from the top left corner, you can move the window to your preferred position. Tapping on the image will hide or show the window's UI. This will typically hide anyway when you start drawing on the canvas. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's jump into a little study using our sample image. Whether you're a free user or a Blaze subscriber, you can follow along. You don't have to be an expert in portraiture or anatomy. I'm certainly not, but we can focus on building things up using shapes. We're gonna approach this in a similar way to how I've been doing the Magma Classroom live sessions. That is by doing a series of shorter time sketches first and gradually increasing the time limit. I normally start by using my rectangle selection tool to select an area on the canvas that roughly matches the reference. This is just to keep things neat once I start adding paint. I normally like to do a grayscale version first just to get a sense of the values, the lights and the darks of the image. Having a button in the reference window for that to switch to grayscale view is also really helpful especially when you're still learning how to see those changes in value when you're working in color mode. So these first two sketches are only two minutes. It's not a lot of time and they're gonna look pretty awful, right? And that's totally okay, I knew they would be. That's not an excuse to be lazy, but it takes a certain pressure off. These are warm-up sketches. I'm getting my eyes into the game. I'm loosening up my drawing hand and I'm getting a sense of what is important in the image. After doing these two minute sketches, I move on to five minutes. Still not a lot of time, but I will still be able to get a little bit more in. Having done those two minute sketches, five minutes definitely feels longer, but there's still only so much you can do. So I avoid getting stuck into the details by still squinting my eyes, staying zoomed out and not doing any sketch lines beforehand. It takes too long when I have only this very short amount of time set for it. Another thing I like to do with these much shorter sketches is to work on one layer, no undos, no eraser. Those things all take up extra time. Time sketches like this are a great way to practice seeing and focusing on what's important and simplifying things. It gives you an opportunity to assess what you did with the time and ask what one or two strokes could have been different or could have been added to improve the impression of the image to make it stronger. You get to quickly test out different approaches to the same image. I did two five minute sketches here with the second one being a little bit different from the first, working more with the lasso fill instead of the brush tool to see whether that helped to speed up the process and get a different look. 
I'm not committing to some masterpiece, but I am giving myself the opportunity to test out some different ideas, to experiment. Moving on from 5 minutes, we increase the time to 15 minutes. Again, having done the shorter sketches really puts into perspective how much time you have. You can spend longer in this, but I do recommend in particular with the shorter ones that you put your pencil down at the end of the time and move on to the next one. At least in the beginning. After your first 15 minutes, maybe you want to start again, like I did, and increase the time a little bit once you start getting into it. Maybe you find that you're actually enjoying this and it's starting to look pretty cool. Well, let's bump up the time. And having more time, I might change my approach a little bit here too. With these, I decided I will actually make a little bit of a line sketch after I put in the background. I want to be a little better with the proportions, seeing as I'm doing a face. But still, I don't want to spend too much time on it. It's intended as a guide. And I'll keep it on a separate layer too. This time, I might actually have three or four layers here. But again, no erasing, no undoes. Time is limited. There is also something to be said for putting in the time, spending more time on a piece. And I think after doing shorter sketches like we've done so far, moving on to something where you allow yourself much more time will also be really valuable. Because you are going to make mistakes and there are going to be problems to solve. When you have too little time, it might be an excuse not to try and figure those problems out. So once you're all warmed up, definitely do put in the time. But this sort of approach, if you don't have a lot of time in your day, you've got other tasks, you've got work, you've got school, these kinds of things, an exercise like this effectively takes about an hour and you can get quite a lot done, a few different variations. So that's where I'll wrap things up and I'll play out with the rest of the time lapse. We really hope you find this feature helpful and it enhances your workflow. If you happen to do a study of our sample image here, we'd love to see it. So if you post on social media, be sure to tag Magma or use the hashtag MagmaRefRed. Happy painting.